Hello everyone, Ray here. We've got a new phone from Sony, finally. The one with here is not as exciting as the XR Premium or the XR S, but it's a really gorgeous, spectacular, stylish mid-ranger, the XA1. Let's have a look. If you're hunting for a well-built mid-ranger, with glass on the back and a metal frame, there are quite a few options out there, like for instance, the 2017 refreshed A-series from Samsung and the HTC U Play. But Sony's got a really different approach, and here's why. For just 249 quid in the UK, the XA1's not only well presented in the box, but also backed with all the accessories you can think of. As always, the user guide. Throw it. Then actually kind of a disappointment here, a 5 foot 1.5 amp wall adapter. Thanks to the MediaTek chipset, the XA1's got no fast charging technology on board. Then a USB cable. And yes, Sony's given the XA1 a pair of earbuds. I'm not gonna check that out, but certainly a respectable gesture. Alright, back on the XA1 itself. So I've been using it for about a week's time. It is indeed very Sony-ish. If you like the simplistic, minimalist, boxy design, the XA1 shares the exact same design language as the XA Premium and the XA itself. But instead of a metal loop or the gorgeous, spectacular glass loop on the Premium, the XA1 features a plastic loop. Still, we've got the same shape. The top and the bottom mesh of the phone are totally flat, with 2.5D curves along the two sides. Generally speaking, it is a design that treasures straight lines and flat surfaces, with no camera hump at all. While despite the material choice, there's actually a silver painted ring along the top and the bottom mesh to make it look slightly more premium. And it's even got a 2.5D curved glass panel on the front. Unless you are the user yourself, the people around you will not think it's a cheap plastic phone. It even kind of looks like a flagship phone, to be honest. While speaking of the display panel, the XA1 still carries the stupid thick bezel on the top and the bottom, but the two sides are basically bezel-free. Not only does it make the XA1 stand out in the mid-range game, but also way more one-hand manageable. Moving on to the hardware, the volume rocker is finally above the power button, so we don't have to move the thumb to an awkward position anymore. The power button itself has also got the same iconic Sony design. Unfortunately, it lacks a 2017 must-have fingerprint sensor. What a shame. But hey, if you are in America, you are not getting that from a Sony phone anyway. Continue with the iconic camera shutter button and the SIM tool free SIM card and microSD card tray. And surprisingly, the XA1 packs 32 gigs of internal storage and 3 gigs of RAM. Yes, that's a surprise. Not many mid-rangers from Sony's got that. Other stuffs including the LED notification light, NFC chip, and the very 2017 USB Type-C port with USB on-the-go support are also rare on mid-rangers. However, initially I've got some expectation for a dual speaker setup, as the XA1's got a speaker grill thing on the chin. But that seems to be just a design. It ships with a mono speaker. And finally, on the top side, we've got a headphone jack, a nice touch, and even a noise cancelling microphone on a mid-ranger. So overall, the XA1's indeed a plasticky phone. But it's glad to see Sony's put so much effort on not only the build quality, but also those small details, especially the hardware. Speaking of the hardware, time for the performance and features. Another surprise is the XA1 runs Android 7.0 Nougat out of the box. It's a step ahead compared to Samsung and HTC's mid rangers However, if you're looking for bloatware and manufacturer value added features, Sony's done the exact opposite. The Xperia launcher continues to be light and stock-like, with next to none third-party features. Powered by a MediaTek Helio P20 octa-core processor, backed with 3 gigs of RAM, day-to-day -day navigation's indeed silky smooth. While according to the standard apps opening speed test, launching the same list of apps, the XA1 feels like a flagship phone while navigating around the interface and firing up light apps. But when it comes to large apps and games, Mid-Ranger is a Mid-Ranger. 
Still, it does give better performance than the HTC U Play, backed with an even lower ranked Helio P10 processor. In the second round, the XA1 also gives surprisingly great multitasking performance. Most of the apps have been kept in memories. It does lag a little bit while switching between apps, so it's not exactly flagship performance, but close. The only app that has run into problem was Perfect Angle. Other than that, the XA1 gives comparable performance to the Xperia Exact, and close to mainstream flagship performance overall. To be fair, running 8 tabs at the same time while 3 of them are heavy duty 3D games, the test could be challenging. Normally, the XA1 delivers smooth and snappy experience with great RAM management, considering the amount of RAM it packs. On the contrary, if you are a serious gamer, you shouldn't have any expectation on the media chipset here. Despite the 720p display, the XA1 does handle 2D games like Clash Royale seamlessly smooth, but 3D games including my favorite, Dynasty Warriors, are barely playable. Generally speaking, for business or lifestyle-oriented users, the XA1 feels really snappy and responsive in day-to-day -day media consumption. Just don't expect too much from a mid-ranger. The camera, however, is totally another story. The XA1 packs some amazing optics. It actually squeezes 23 megapixels into a 1 over 2.3 inch sensor with an f2.0 aperture. But no optical image stabilization for video, and it maxes out at 1080p. However, it's got steady shot and HDR support. Speaking of those features, the XA1 even tracks moving objects, and it's even got the latest manual mode from Sony, with access to all the shutter speed, ISO exposure, and the white balance. With shutter speed as low as 1 second, low light photography shouldn't be a problem, unless you have trouble holding the phone stable. They've even put an 8 megapixel shooter on the front, with the same f2.0 aperture, and wait, autofocus, is rare even on flagship phones. Although it lacks selfie flash, images taken are bright enough most of the time, and after turning off the skin smoothening effect, details captured with the front shooter are actually not bad at all. Noise could be a problem, but don't forget, this particular shot was taken in one of the most challenging scenarios, with literally no direct light sources at all. Image quality is actually impressive, even in flagship standard. Now, the main camera. Under broad daylight, colors are really vivid and vibrant. Dynamic range is also one of the best out there, if not the best. Unfortunately, noise cancellation and artifact are way too aggressive. While due to the wide 24mm field of view, distortion is more than noticeable on the edges. Still, those are really minor issues and kind of negligible. Generally speaking, the XA1 shoots really vibrant and colorful images, with accurate white balance and impressive dynamic range. Friends will be impressed by your photos on social media platforms, and here we've got a whole lot more photos taken with the XA1. Now, in a cloudy evening with limited sunlight, the XA1 continues to capture engaging and saturated photos, while the contrast and the dynamic range continues to be right on point. when it comes to indoor photography with really poor lighting. Saturation remains impressive, but artifacts start to dominate the images, with next to none details, if any. Photos taken with auto mode in extreme lighting condition could be horrible, that's why we need manual mode on a smartphone. Extending the exposure time to 1 over 4 seconds, with ISO kept in auto, artifact is still there, but the details it manages to maintain is now acceptable. With top-notch color saturation, brightness, dynamic range, and almost no lens flare and digital noise at all.
And before we move on to a video recording, is the last image I've taken with the XA1. It remains noise free and incredibly rich in colors. Not the sharpest knowledge shooter, but totally usable. Indeed, breathtaking. Now, video recording is limited to 1080p, details captured are not comparable to flagship phones, but SteadyShot makes it a reliable day-to-day -day live recorder. It's safe to say the XA1's an impressive mid-range camera phone. Multimedia experience, the 5-inch 720p IPS display with 294 pixels per inch could be a deal-breaker. Anything below 300 means individual pixels could be noticeable when you stare at it close enough. But for the majority, it wouldn't be a huge problem in day-to-day -day use, absolutely acceptable. Color reproduction though is great, nowhere come close to AMOLED screens or even IPS displays on Sony's flagships. Contrast and the black levels also not there, but overall it gives natural colors with a warm and slightly reddish white balance out of the box, which is pleasing to the eyes. Oh, if you favor a bluish, greenish or reddish white balance, of course you may head to a settings menu and make it yourself. And even though the XA1 lacks the X-Reality engine, it's got an alternative image enhancement option and as always the super vivid mode, which I recommend not to use it. Another disappointment is the single down throwing speaker. It gives respectable volume, but the mids and the low frequencies are disappeared. Headphone audio quality, however, holds up really well. It actually drives the XBA3 as good as mainstream flash phones do. Don't expect crazy clarity or soundstage the quad deck variant of the G6 can offer. It also lacks the SEHX, which upscale compressed music files to close to lossless quality, and also LDAC for crisp and clear Bluetooth output hi fi systems. But it does support aptX technology, with a decent headphone audio quality. Multimedia experience not gonna compete with the XA Premium, but you won't be disappointed neither, considering the price. Here we've come to the battery life. 2300 mAh battery for a 5 inch phone, still a bit on the smaller side. But driving a 720p display and powering an efficient Cortex A53 based processor, we can't draw the conclusion without testing it out. According to the first round of the battery life test, after 4 hours of video videos playback, 32% of the battery was left. Comparing to other phones with IPS displays, so far so good. But in 2017, it's a bit on the lower end. In the second round, the brightness has been dialed back to 50%. The result would be closer to what we are probably experiencing in real life. It drained only 40% of the battery, again not bad, comparable to the S8 Plus. But Huawei's flagship lineup and Samsung's mid-rangers have clearly done an even better job. While thanks to the media chipset, there's no quick charge technology on board. So battery life wouldn't be the strongest area of the XA1, but certainly a pass. All in all, a boxy, identical to current flagship design language, the XA1 is indeed crafted with plastic. But Sony's effort on improving the build quality and the hardware it packs really worth the applause. Raw performance and gaming experience are not the best out there, but the user interface is indeed silky smooth. While the camera is absolutely brilliant, the best on a mid-ranger. Artifact could be an issue, but for general purposes, friends on Facebook and Instagram will be well impressed. The 720p display mediocre battery life with no quick charge technology and the single down firing speaker, the XA1's clearly not flawless. But the display gives natural and pleasing colors with flagship quality headphone audio output. The Xperia XA1's a really promising mid-ranger. So that's it for today. Hope you all enjoyed watching this video. Like it if you liked it and don't forget to subscribe. There are also two more videos here for you to watch next. Stay tuned for more videos like this and more reviews upcoming. See you next time.